It's time to redraw your artwork. It's episode nine. This is our longest running series. It is the hashtag through my feed that I see constantly and most regularly updated with awesome artworks people send in. Whoa, someone animated the artwork I did when I was a teenager. God, that's so cool. I would like a name for him. He is a war hero who had his face and stomach blown off. That is right up my alley. So I'm gonna be working with 26 materials, starting off with a pencil, then bringing it to life with the 24 markers that I have to work with and last but not least, putting the art liners to work, specifically my favorite, the best brush pen you will ever use. It's got a jet French Jazza ticket for approval, this one. All right, war hero with a face and guts blown out. Let's get to work. I'm gonna basically do the same pose, but this time I'm gonna have the face front on and we can have his body sort of turned to the side a little bit. Like we're just standing viewing him from a different position. So we've quite clearly got in the original this really open eye cavity. And in fact, I think to do this well, I basically have to draw a skull and wrap flesh around it after. So I need to make sure that the skull we're gonna be revealing looks cool. This is very Two-Face, I love it. It's like these three buttons here makes me feel like it's almost like slightly Victorian in aesthetic a little bit. Like we've got a tail coat here and, and a cape. I'm gonna have a clip here and I'm gonna have a cape that carries across the other shoulder. Let's get a little militaristic and regal. Since we have a very large cape, we can then drop that down. And then this can turn into literally like coattails behind him. Then we have that mix between gnarly like skulls and grit and weirdly refined and cool. Now we've got a hand here that seems to, is that a claw? Or is he tuck, it's tucked into his pocket maybe. So I'll maybe make the coat be folded up. We have this double layered coat that's folded up over his arms here. Now he's a war hero. He looks pretty gnarly, but I kind of like the idea that like, and I've got to name him. Maybe he's like Captain Corpse, like Captain America, but he fights to save people from becoming a corpse like he became. His superpower is he's not dead. It's a good superpower to have. <laughs> so for a piece like this, I'm going to be pretty minimal on color. If anything, I'm just going to lean on my ice grays and some reds and just really punch out this grit. Now already at a base level, I really love this. And I'm just getting started. Like you can see how quickly just slapping down that line work with a bit of line weight variation, a little bit of texture does quite a lot. Let's amp up the contrast. I'm gonna turn the intensity up a notch or two by adding some color, but I'm gonna be really sparing with the color cause I want it to really punch through. So I'm just gonna grab Blossom, just really lightly, pop this in the skin tone areas. Same with this coat, sky blue. Just going around the edges of the coat and giving the gray a bit of a wash and basically tint the whole coat to look like a super, super dark blue because the next thing I'm gonna do is add black. Both to fill in shadow areas of the coat and in some areas blending back in with that gray to soften it. And of course, to fill in the cape. <laughs> So that's filled in quite a lot of the shading. I mean, it's still pretty subtle. This is where we can add the punch, specifically with a bit of red. Now the original image that I'm working with doesn't really have color. It is a black and white image, but I think especially in black and white imagery, having a, a color pop and red is often the passion color or the blood color. It's a cool way to do it. So I think in areas where it's obviously meant to be violent or visceral, the skull and where it sort of connects by sinew to the rest of the flesh. I'm just gonna gently fill in with this red. Then going back to that blossom color, blend that into a slightly fleshy medium in the highlight. By saturating that, it's just gonna soften it just so it sinks back into the image a little bit and also adequately fills in all the gory bits. <laughs> This gives it punch in the right place, but as you can see, by softening it again, it sort of brings it all together. And then you can always tell the difference between a, a, a marker black and then an ink black. So in the darkest areas, I'm gonna go in with my brush pen because I can go super thick and just add in the blackest of black highlights just to give it that really sharp edged comic shaded look. Still pretty sketchy in approach, which I think for a, a character like this works to his advantage. He's meant to look a little bit gnarly. Reese, I hope you enjoy my variant 
on your design. Thanks for sharing your artwork with us. There's so many cool entries to this and everyone has such unique designs. Oh my God. Going through my old drawings, I found this concept of a Pokemon. So when I was a kid, I made my own called Zod. <laughs> Instead of Pokeballs, they use Zod discs. I love that. Yim Drew Gort. Must be like some sort of a squire or something. I've got all the materials I need to basically do my version of your artwork. Thanks for submitting it, Yim. Let's get to work. So Gort by Yim is very good. There's not much I would change. I feel like this is a very cartoony version. I feel like it's actually quite similar to my cartoony style. So maybe what I'll do is I'll shift the style to be a little closer to comic book, a little more realism in proportions, but try and keep that really whimsical feel. And I sort of want to flip the symmetry, like we've got the same character, but this time, sort of leaning back in this direction. I feel like Gort's quite young. So I'm trying to keep some of those a little more like playful proportions, chubbier cheeks, wider face, pretty soft features in general. Now, last time we did a line of work, I basically stuck to the brush pen. That's a very heavy handed approach. I probably shouldn't do it for all of them. So this one, I'm gonna start a little more subtle. I'll probably go for a mid tier, like a, go a 0.5. That's like on the thicker end of our fine liners. And I'll just go over the whole thing, give him really consistent line art. So I'm pretty happy with that as the line works just erase all of the sketch underneath. And then it's just as simple as doing some two-tone shading. I mean, I've got a color template right here. Now the eagle-eyed among you may notice this video is set up a little differently because every time I've done this so far, the previous eight times have been with digital art. The other reason I'm doing it traditionally is because I have some very exciting news. After we sold out of the Pro Artist Series Illustrator Collection, we opened up the website to take requests for people who might want a second chance. This is pre-order only. We sold out and we can't get more immediately, but we do have a very small batch. We managed to get and have in reserve and we are going to take pre-orders so that anyone who missed out and wants a second chance can order one made to order. And if you're quick enough, you might even get one of that small batch. So getting quick and order the Pro Artist Series really is everything you need to make incredible art at a pro level, but at a super affordable price. The best price for pro art materials and everything you need that you will ever find. But don't delay because if you want to get your hands on a JPEG, you literally have like just over two weeks. That's it. We're not selling it again. So now is your chance but don't miss your chance because you got till the end of February. The great thing about alcohol markers is the push-pull dynamic that you get. It's really just not a matter of having the amount of colors in the marker colors that you are gonna want for your piece because you can slowly work your way towards exactly the color you want. Take this hair for instance. I started with the russet, which is a bit more of a reddish brown, darkened it with the brown gray, and then brought back a little bit more of that earthy brown tone with the tan on top. And then to add some more contrast, I'm going back in with the black brown just to make sure there's a little bit of pop in the hair. And the other reason it's really good to keep this in mind is because when there are colors that are a little similar in tone, using that push and pull in color allows you to just make sure that they're all just a little bit different, whether it be in contrast or hue, just to make sure that they all are visually nicely separated. Okay, so I've left the skin till last and that is because it's gonna be a little interesting demonstration because I have two greens. These greens look like this and this. So even if I just use these two to get the skin tone, which I think looking at the collection, you would assume you would do, it would end up, especially once you start adding layers and blending, looking really, really dark and super, super saturated. But with just a little bit of color theory knowledge and practice, obviously you can get exactly what you want because yellow and blue make green. I mean, look at that already. And then if I wanted to just look a little fleshier, I could add the blossom and that can give it a whole wash to bring it all together. Obviously, if you limit yourself to whatever's in front of you, you can only work within the boundaries of whatever in front of you. But I made this mix so that you can blend and do that push and pull to a huge degree and unlock a whole world of nuance and contrast. And then last but not least, we add that final little bit of pop, the red eyes, and I'm gonna use my brush pen to just go around the edges and give it a really sharp, nice final bold outline. I personally find that doing that one stylistic thicker outline just really polishes it up. It helps you clean up wherever you might have gone over the edges, emphasizes the silhouette, and just gives the whole thing a much sharper, crisper, and defined look. Thank you, Yim, for the inspiration. I really hope you enjoy my reimagining of Gord. This is so cool. Oh my God, what is happening here? Freddy age nine. Freddy buddy, are you okay? There's a lot of blood in this one, Freddy. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I don't know how I'd reimagine that one. Whoa, good Lord. 
I love too that people use this hashtag to show off them redrawing their own art, revisiting their own creations when they were earlier in their creative development and reimagining them with their current skill level. So cool. Check out the hashtag. There's so much cool stuff there. My nine year old idolizes you. This is her anime character, X Ninja. That is so cool. All right, Charles, can I bring X Ninja to life? No, no I can't because you already did. She looks really cool. But I'm gonna, I'll bring my version to life and I hope you enjoy it. <sighs> Let's get started. Now, I don't often like to change a lot about the original design elements of the pieces I'm working on. But what I wanna add here, because this is X Ninja, is fingerless gloves. I know not they're not in the original, but fingerless gloves are cool. All right, slap down some line work. I think this time with a, let's go with the point three. Oh, this is always the satisfying bit. Got my line work down. Just got to erase the sketch. It's just like slowly revealing a really clean version of the artwork you've been working on. It's really satisfying. And now it's just onto color. And there's really just two main brighter colors, the skin tone and the purple. Oh, and I'm missing a crown. <laughs> Very cute that this uh, epic X ninja has a lovely little tiara. <laughs> All right, color time. And it's the same as before. And as you can probably tell by piece number three, this is a bit of a wash, rinse and repeat. You can reliably draw awesome characters doing the sketch, line art, and then color with those same sort of steps. There's my X Ninja, I'm super happy with that. And I also love just how those subtle things, like a very light wash of a different color with pencils or markers and creating that little bit of hue variation just makes a piece really pop. And of course, I love the original this is based off. So super huge thank you to Charles's daughter for sending that in. Let's pick one more piece and I'm gonna see how far I can take it in the time I've left to do something really epic. So many cool pieces. It's hard to pick just a couple. It's, it's fun to lean to ones that have a little bit of color in them though, because it sort of gives me a little bit to work with as far as like knowing what they had in, in vision. The variety in styles and imagination and ages. Oh, this one's really fun. I like this. This is Nova Star Sniper. He's explorer and soldier of the multiverse. Nova Star Sniper. Let's see if we can do you justice. As with my previous three artworks, getting stuck into the sketch is obviously the foundation of the piece. Starting light and airy and keeping it simple and slowly adding detail. Fortunately, the reference for this actually had a surprising amount of detail, including the entire design of the weapons that are obviously this character's main focal point. And if you look at the original, I am literally copying the design one to one. Next comes line work. And I kept this one pretty simple. I, I do tend to be heavy handed. So this time I stuck to a 0.5 fine liner and did nothing else. Right down the middle in terms of detail, leaning more on the fine end so I could get a little bit more of a comic book feel and even added some cross hatching and shading to add that comic book punch. <laughs>
when it comes to color, I pulled out all the tricks. The push and pull like I talked about, working my way to exactly the colors I wanted and also just leaving a little bit of room for movement knowing that I have the pencils to turn to later to further refine or add some effects. Colors like the denim of the jacket take a little bit more back and forth because I'm desaturating as I'm adding the blue saturation to darken it. And then other areas like the weapon and the glove and the skin and air, they're pretty standard paint by numbers. Pick two or three colors, blend as you go and create the sense of shadow. And around the whole piece, I made sure to leave a clean white edge in the direction of a back light that in the end portion of my markering, I went through with my yellow markers to give it that really sharp, hot edge highlight. I love doing this. It really makes pieces punch out with an epic lighting effect. And last but certainly not least come the pencils. And my God, this takes everything to a new level super quick. I added a purple to all of the shadow areas, gently bring that up, adding the hue variation. Also a little bit of a cyberpunky feel with that purple mixing with the blue and then using a really light yellow to blow out those highlights and bleed into the areas of the clothes created a little bit more of a diffused glow and a warmth around the direction of that light. And wouldn't you know it, I basically tricked you into a watching a drawing tutorial because holy crap, we covered a lot of art theory in this and uh, I ended up with four bloody awesome drawings and you might have even accidentally learned a thing or two along the way. But let me know in the comments, how did I do basing on the original designs and which one is your favorite? These are my personal reimaginings of the artwork that's been contributed. I am so stoked with these, not only as a result of like my own interpretation, but the designs that I worked on were really fun. I just admire your talent and I'm really grateful that you share that with me and you allow me to, to do this and share it with people. And it's occurred to me that this is the first time in this whole series that I actually have something physical as a result because I've never done it traditionally before. So in line with that, and as a huge thank you to these four artists, I am going to not only send them the original signed artwork for each of those four pieces, but as a thank you for contributing their talent, they're all going to get a JPAC. Guys, if you're interested in the results I produce here, obviously I use the JPAC and it's available for another couple of weeks. I'm just so glad we also get to bring it back just for the people who really wanted to get one and missed out. And it's because of your support in watching these videos and contributing these designs and in getting the JPAC that this cycle of awesome creative contribution gets to continue. I get to make awesome videos, make awesome stuff for you guys to enjoy in your creative journey. And you share that with me and I'm incredibly grateful. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more fun with art and creative. That's it for now. Thank you. And I said thank you twice because I'm very thankful. Till next time, I'll see you later. <laughs>